I can make a living from walking in the woods. You can bet I be sitting pretty good high on a hill, looking at a field downwind. Hey guys, Brandon Storl here with Backwoods Boys Life. It is the 3rd of June and we are going to make a video today on something really, really cool um, that I have done for a while and I'm going to try a new product today. Um, and what we're going to be doing is tanning fur. We're going to tan a deer hide today that I have. I've got several deer hides. I've got a couple coyote hides. I've got a bunch of coon hides and different stuff like that. And I've always used different kinds of tanning formula just trying to figure out you know what the consumer brands are out there that do a good job to get a good tan on a hide. Um, and today what we're going to be using is the Deer Hunters and Trappers Hide Tanning Formula. Okay, Best place to buy this stuff is going to be on Amazon. I think it's about, oh, it goes anywhere from $8 to $12 a bottle. I think I paid $12 for this because it's kind of off-season. Um, but I've heard a lot of good stuff about it. I have a good friend of mine, Tracy Brown. He's used it with success. Um, and it's, it's a really easy product to use as far as I, as far as I know. So be the first time using it. I'm gonna follow the directions, which are all on the back of this sucker, and um, we're just gonna. I'm basically gonna take you guys along. We're gonna learn as we go, and we'll figure it out. Stay tuned. All right, guys. So we're gonna start with uh, basically. I'll show you guys the hide that we're gonna do. Um, this right here is a, just a small deer, and it is just a dried pelt. Um, you can see, you know, we have the hair on, and that's the style that we're gonna do. Um, so on the inside it's been flushed, it's flushed pretty good, and it's been dried. Um, there's a little bit of meat, just a small amount in there. Not too bad for a, for a hide, I think we're going to be fine with it. But anyway, it's basically kind of the consistency of like a cardboard, really, really stiff. And the way the formula, or the directions read, is that it's, it's actually, they recommend that you use this with, um, or you tan, a green hide. A green hide is going to be a wet hide, like fresh, freshly um, fleshed, skinned and fleshed. And the reason for that is it's going to take that that tanning formula a lot better. So, but since this is dry, and this has been dried since winter time, like I said, it's June now, and I've been storing this hide um, dried. What we're going to do is basically recreate that green hide, and we're going to wet this down and just get it wet enough to where it's pliable again and soft and then we'll go ahead and start with the actual uh, tan on process. So this is gonna be really, really simple according to the direction. So, um, you know, we don't really need to overthink this much. So let's get started. Okay, so basically we have, I, what I've done here to like loosen up this pelt, and I just poured some water in here. It's not scalding hot. You know, you probably just like a lukewarm water would be fine. And then you can take something that's heavy and push it down in there. And this isn't going to take very long. Um, you're not trying to, you know, just really soak and, uh, you know, make it all crazy soggy. You just want to loosen that that skin up a little bit. So I'm thinking right around, I think the instructions said right around about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, I think that's going to be about right. So we'll just kind of keep this soaked and, and uh, get it going here. And then we will get it ready for the tanning process. Okay, guys. So... We got the uh, hide all nice and softened up. It was like I said, it was in there for about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, you know, it's going to depend on your hide. Um, you want that real soft, you know, supple touch. Um, you know, and basically went from that hard, tacky surface to a real nice uh, soft pelt here. So, um, a couple things I wanted to go over because I, I didn't go over it earlier, and we didn't kind of get to go from start to finish on you know fur care and and all that kind of stuff and. I'm I'm been kind of bad about that. I'm gonna try and get a video out on fleshing and salting and stuff like that. So um, the journey on this on this pelt and any other pelt that I have that I'm gonna store and dry it, is that basically you get it off the animal and it's gonna have a lot of muscle and fat and all kinds of junk on it. So what I initially do if I'm going to go ahead and and uh, turn that hide and work it is I will uh, flesh it out. You know and um, I like to use a fleshing um, knife, an actual like it's kind of like a draw knife. And you know, th for those of you who are familiar with those, you can look them up on the internet. Um, fleshing knives are good, and they work really fast and they're efficient. You can put it over your fleshing pole, um, which is basically like a rounded stand, and you sit there and you just pull that meat off and all the fat and everything. 
But if you don't have that, and a lot of us don't, um, you can just grab your good old knife. Um, this knife's been in my family for a long time. And you can scrape that stuff off the hide. And basically, you know, I don't have any real meat or anything on here, but basically you would just keep working it down and pulling it. And you'll take that muscle and you turn it down to like basically it's a white side. It's all white. And you'll have some under hair that'll pop out. And once you have the whole hide on the underside, kind of a white coloration, um, then you're done. So, but, uh, you know, and then you're done with that. Then the fleshing job is done. And then what I do, and some other trappers do this too, and and it works the best. I, I haven't found anything that really works any better. Is I put my hides in my washing machine. Shh, don't tell my wife. And what I do is I put it in the washing machine, and I put it on a cold cycle, and it's just like a short... Um, wash like a short rinse it tumbles it for a second washes it out gets all the blood and the dirt and everything out of the hair it really cleans the hair up nice um, better than I think I could probably do um, soaking it in a barrel and trying to clean it that way so I haven't found anything that really does better than that so um, that's what I'll do with that and then uh, once I have that clean and it'll still be kind of greasy and it'll have a lot of fat inside the hide and uh, what I'll end up doing a lot of times is, and, and this is what you got to do to really preserve that hide good, is you want to put some salt on this hide. And what that's going to do is that is going to um, suck all the moisture and the fat out of the hide and make it dry and so that it won't rot because all that stuff that's trapped in there, it will rot. You know, and, and some people, they won't, they won't use the salt process and they'll just dry it out and some skins you can do that but deer hide is particularly thick and I found that if you just put a little salt um, on there and it has to be non iodized salt it's gonna be like a pickling salt or a canning salt you can find it at your store you'll sprinkle it on there and be super over generous with it just cover that sucker just like that you can roll it up and uh, basically it's gonna start draining it's gonna like ooze out moisture and it's gonna just suck everything out of that hide that will cause it to rot um, and so, you know, and then you can do it from there. Um, and then you can hang it, and that's what I usually do. Um, also, you can also salt the hide prior to um, washing it, and you know, you can wash it right before you actually go to tan it. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, but I just kind of want to tell you guys a little bit of the process and everything that goes along with it. So, um, uh, I started this, this hide here, and for those of you who are probably looking at it, probably going, wow, that's a janky looking hide, and it is. Um, this was a little yearling um, doe and here's the tail down here and this should have more hide all the way going up um, and it just it didn't get cut very right and I wanted to start with I'm gonna test a new tanning product I want to use something that I've never used before or I want to use something that I don't really care so much about so this hide right here is not really a good complete hide it's not gonna do the job um, you know, you wouldn't sell for anything, I, I wouldn't imagine, but um, I just want to tan it and try it. Um, I have it laying around, so. Um, yeah, and like I said, if this works, then I'm gonna use this same tanning process for everything else, but anyway. Well, for the next part of the directions on this, um, basically we have it, like I said, we have it uh, softened up. I tacked it up here on this board, um, just, you know, for eh, YouTube purposes, so you guys can get a good idea and see how we're gonna apply it, but. Um, you don't have to do that. The way the instructions read on this is that you just apply it either by hand with gloves on or with a paintbrush and you're just going to apply it to everything on here. Then you're going to fold it inside so that, you know, um, the hair is the only thing sticking out. So fold it over so that the, uh, it, it can, you know, really cure inside there. You don't want it to dry out too fast. You're going to let that sit for like 12 hours. Um, and then after that we're going to open it up and start breaking the hide and flexing it as, as it dries out so it'll be a, a continuing process so but anyway just kind of wanted to um, share some of that on on how, what we do with the hides and how we get to this point here and i mean if you're skinning it straight off the animal you're going to flesh it and just immediately tan it which is the best way to do it um, you don't have to worry about any of that uh, that other process, the salt and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, well, we will go ahead and kind of let this drip dry a little bit and then we're gonna get started applying the tanning solution here in just a second. Stay tuned. All right guys, so we're gonna to get to the application process now. 
Now I had it hanging up earlier for kind of like some demonstration purposes and this stuff right here is really really runny so you know I had it hanging up I want to show you guys how it looked and everything and explain it but honestly if you're gonna do this stuff do it on the floor because it's just it's gonna be all over the place and it's kind of hard to do it if you have it up on a stretcher or a hanger or anything like that so how do you apply it you're gonna lay everything out real nice like I said you know we kind of have things set up here I don't have this hide completely trimmed because I'm just I'm going to tan it and then I'm going to trim it after I get it nice and tan. Well, it's so runny that I mean, gosh, I can just kind of lay this stuff out like this, go all around, and that way I know what I've done and what I haven't done. Um, something that's real important when you're tanning a hide is to get those corners and those edges. So you want to make sure that everything has a good covering all the edges and everything otherwise you're gonna have you know kind of a hard tack edge and it's not gonna be tanned right um, so we're gonna rub this in gosh this stuff is just super simple um, you know pros and cons with this style is that um, with a dip style where you actually dip the hide into a solution you know you don't have to worry about um, you know, having to rub it in by hand. You don't need latex gloves. You don't need, you know, a paintbrush or anything like that. You just, you just go ahead and dip it in there. And that's what I've used with that Johnny Thorpe solution um, for a long time. And I like that step, it works good. But, you know, like I said, we're trying something new here. So this one here, you gotta rub it in. Um, but it, it's such a simple process. There's just not a whole lot to it. Smell, it kinda has almost like a citrusy smell to it. Kind of, kind of interesting. Um, not, not offensive by any means. So we're just going to kind of continue to coat this all the way out, work it into the edges. Kind of push your hands out in here, almost like you're applying a, just like a lotion to the leather. Here we go. Get it all out there. I've got some edges here. Some of these I'm going to trim. I already know I'm going to trim them, so I'm not going to get real crazy with it. Um, one area I didn't get here is this tail. Put a lot of that right in that tail. That's going to get trimmed too. A lot of this is. So rub that in there real good. Okay. So I got to get a coat in here. And this isn't a very big hide. I mean, I got, I've got a lot of this bottle left over. Um, I tell you what. It doesn't tell you a lot about overkill, and so, you know what, let's go for overkill. So let's add a little more in there, and just really coat that leather good, or that hide, and get that in there. We want to make some good leather here. I don't want this to be a, a piece of junk. I don't want it to be stiff and get a lot of solutions out there that'll say, oh yeah, it'll tan the hide. Of course it'll tan the hide, but the, bite, the end product is never as good as you want it to be unless you really work it you know this is not a uh, tidying or uh, tanning a hide is not a a simple you know apply and rinse kind of process you really have to work these hides um, you know just because I put this solution on yeah I could walk away from it and let it dry the way it is and would it tan yes it would but it would probably still be stiff as a board and I've had that before the the main thing with this is get this tanning solution on get all of your your meat off the hide you know do your proper um, care of these of these hides and then work that hide when you're done and that's going to be in part two um, yes this is going to be a, a two-part deal I couldn't put everything on on just one video that would just be a crime to YouTube you know we got to do part one part two so anyway um, got all this worked in good um, the smell is, like I said, it doesn't stink. It's actually very natural smelling. Um, kind of like it. Um, not offensive at all, like some chemicals um, are like your, your commercial uh, tanning solution. So um, really neat. Um, just working good. I can already, I can just see how this is going to work really well. So anyway, um, what we're going to do now, since we have this all locked in, is we're going to fold the hide over. 
I'm going to set it right here on the floor and I'm going to let it sit for 12 hours um, per the instructions. Once I let it sit for 12 hours, I'm going to take it out and then I'm going to let it dry in the open air. And as it dries in the open air, I'm going to come out here every few hours and I'm going to stretch that hide, stretch it out. You see how small it is right now. I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to actually expand it out and it's going to be super, super just supple and loose and actually be able to be used for uh, clothing or a craft of some kind. So that's the end goal and to preserve this hide. So anyway, I'm Brandon Stoll with Backwoods Boys Life. This is part one of tanning uh, deer hide. I'll see you guys on part two here in the next day or two. Thanks for watching. Hunting, fishing, loving every day. That's the prayer that a country boy prays. Thank God he made me this way. Hunting and fishing and loving every day. Early in the morning, late in the evening. I'm getting red dirt rich and flit a river paint. Hunting, fishing, and loving every day.